Hello everyone, it's Scott here again, and I want to talk about a particular subject, which is surgery and how to deal with it, both prehab and rehab. And I've had a couple of surgeries, maybe you have too, or maybe you have one upcoming, because that's, that's what we're really talking about here. So surgery is always a trauma to the body, mind, emotions, they're all the same thing. And I know that well. So prehab and rehab. I want to introduce the word of the word resilience, because resilience means being able to bounce back. It means having a good outcome, which is what we want. Resilience means to bounce back, and that means that there's implied there a pulling apart, a pulling apart a difficult part of the, of the process in order for you to bounce back. So there has to be, there has to be a difficult part in which the body is beginning to recover. As you probably know, I'm a Feldenkrais Christ practitioner, and Moshe, Feldenkrais equated resilience with health. So we think of health as not being sick sometimes, but more deeply than that, the ability to recover from a trauma without it eventually affecting your normal way of living. So I've had a couple of surgeries. The last one I had, I broke my wrist and quite a scar here. And the surgery itself, see, the last time I had my blood pressure done, it was 127 over, no, 126 over 77. But during that surgery, I was completely out, so you wouldn't think I'd be worried. But they told me my blood pressure was over 200. So obviously, whether you are awake or asleep, the body is feeling this. It's being stressed. And when I came out, this particular surgery, the first night was very painful. And so I had to get through the first night. So that's the low spot. And then you're not able to do very much. And that's another kind of trauma. So I want to, in terms of prehab, let's go to prehab for a moment. There are a lot of things that you can do to increase your function uh, before a surgery. And one of them is to be, in, to be generally fit and to work the muscles, if possible, as close to the injured part as you can. In any way, be, be physically as prepared as you can. But there's a book called The Mindful Body by Dr. Ellen Langer, who is a researcher, and she's been studying uh, fascinating sociological studies related to mind-body unity for years. I just want to relate one, and that is in one experiment, they gave the participants a small wound. Of course, they couldn't do much. It had to be a small cut or something like that divided them up into two or three rooms and, and gave them the normal expectation for healing, the expectation time. And the group that had the normal expectation time and had a clock on the wall running at normal speed healed about the way they were told they should. In another room, they sped the clock up to twice normal speed without telling anyone. And those people healed much faster than the other group, which shows that we have limits. But in terms of prehab, the best uh, mental attitude, the best mindset that we can bring to it uh, will generate a, good out, a better outcome. So we have limits, but we really don't know what they are. So both general fitness and a good, a good outlet, uh, outlook are positive tools before a surgery. And then you go through the stress 
And there is another thing that helps very much, and that is using a lot of the Feldenkrais ideas of visualization. Say, you might be in a cast, can't move certain parts. It's very powerful to visualize moving those parts. And that's been proven scientifically also. So there's a gentle thing that you can do that not only increases uh, your coordination, your muscle strength without really moving, but also your mental outlook as you're doing something positive and can actually feel the results a little bit. And after one surgery I had, I wasn't able to recover fully and couldn't have with mere strength exercises, but another tool that will help you recover more quickly and discover your own resilience is the Feldenkrais idea that if you know what you're doing, you can do what you want. In other words, if you know what you're doing, you're going to be closer to uh, accessing the resources that you actually had. So we talked about visualization, which is one of the resources that all humans have. And the next one is awareness and attention. And what I found, the only thing that got helped me to be fully recovered after an ankle surgery that had affected movement patterns in my knees was to begin to be attentive enough and do lessons that helped with that uh, specific attention to the movement patterns I needed. That, uh, that was the only thing that really helped me. Strength didn't, didn't, exercises didn't help because I was very, already very strong and no strength exercise will make up for a poorly executed movement pattern. So the Feldenkrais idea that movement trumps strength, movement quality. So as you're recovering, you can work on the quality of your movements. And if you are fortunate enough to have a Feldenkrais instructor to guide you a little bit, you can achieve a much better outcome this way, paying attention to your movement patterns strengthening the quality of your movement than you can with any other means. So I wanted to give you some helpful things as I've been through some surgeries because there will be some low points and some helpful things that may help you to be more resilient, to access the uh, resources that you have within a, as a human, your attention, your awareness, and to be a little encouraging. So I know surgery is tough, and these things can help. So that's all for now, and thank you for listening. I hope you can apply some of these things and use the Feldenkrais method. It's uh, really changed and saved my life in very in very many ways. It's a powerful tool. So uh, blessings and good luck with any upcoming surgeries.